presence of the Lord. Without the presence of God, you can't fulfill anything. You know, we all know that God is everywhere. But the manifest presence of God is not everywhere. The manifest presence of God. That is the presence of God that is manifested. It's not everywhere. I mean, if there are a group of satanists in a place, you can't tell me that God is among them. So we know that God is everywhere, but his manifest presence is not everywhere. So there will be places where the name of the Lord is called, but it's the presence of the Lord there. The presence of the Lord is a different thing. And when we have divine presence, we begin to experience divine possibilities. In Exodus 33, the Bible says in the verse number one, that the Lord spoke to Moses saying, depart, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought from the land of Egypt to the land which I swore to, their, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your descendants, I will give it. I will send an angel before you and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Go up to a land of abundance flowing with milk and honey. <clears throat> For I will not go up in your midst because you are stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. And when the people heard this sad word, they mourned and none of them put on his ornaments. For the Lord has said to Moses, say to the sons of Israel, you are stiff-necked, stubborn, rebellious people. If I should come among you for one moment, I will destroy you. Now therefore, take off your ornaments so that I may know what to do with you. So is the Israelites left off their, all their ornaments in repentance from Mount Horeb. Now Moses used to take his own tent and pitch it outside the camp, far away from the camp. And he called it the tent of the meeting of the Lord. Amen. Now I want us to look at verse 12 quickly. Moses therefore said to the Lord, See, you say to me that I should bring up these people but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and that I have also found favor in your sight. Now therefore I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways so that I may know you and be intimately acquainted with you. Recognizing and understanding your ways more clearly that I may find grace and favor in your sight. And consider also that this nation is your people. And the Lord said to Moses, verse 14, My presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. And Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with me, don't lead us up from here. What a prayer meeting. Moses was talking to the Lord. He said, if your presence don't go with me, then I'm not even trying to go. Because they have come out of Egypt. They are now on their way to the promised land. And then God calls him to a meeting. And in this encounter with the Lord, he requested that the presence of the Lord should go with him. It means that he understood something about the presence of the Lord. That it was the presence of the Lord that gave him the victory over Pharaoh. It was the presence of the Lord that brought the power that was... The encounter that took place in the palace of Pharaoh, he threw the rod down and the Bible says that it became a serpent and, and they also, it also turned into, into snakes. And then Moses' rod swallowed the rods of the magicians and took them out of the place. And right through all the ten plagues, he could tell that it was the presence of God that made the difference. And here he was, they've crossed the Red Sea now. On the way to the promised land, God has now come to say, now take the people further. He said, I'm not moving an inch until your presence goes with me. You can't achieve anything for the Lord without his presence. We are just mere vessels in the hands of the Lord. You must always desire the presence of the Lord. If a church will grow, it depends on the presence of the Lord. If anybody would do well in God, you need the presence of the Lord. Somebody shout the presence of the Lord. That is the manifest presence. And the Bible says, Moses said, if your presence will not go with me, then I won't go. Verse 16. For how can it be known that your people and I have found favor in your sight? Is it not that by your going with us, 
so that we are distinguished. When the presence of the Lord is with you, you become distinguished from others. And everyone that desires to be used of God, you must desire the presence of the Lord. That God's presence will go with you. Because when his presence goes with you, things that fall before God will begin to fall before you. If witches fall before God, when witches see you, they will give up. Because you carry the presence of the Lord. That's why the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. We are all the creation of God, but not everyone on the earth is a child of God. You must know that difference. When it comes to God, it's not political correctness. It is a relationship with him. That's what the Bible says, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So it's not like God is not fair. God is genuinely not fair. He is just. There are two different things. Fairness means it doesn't matter what you have done. Everybody qualifies. That's not correct. Justice is what you deserve. So if you really studied well, you have burned the midnight oil, sat down, read your notes, did all your research, you mean you are saying that in the name of fairness, the one who played throughout the whole year, went to discos, clubs, drank, did anything, never learned anything, sat in the same class, you studied, and then when the results come, the person should have 100% like you. Is that fair? That, so when people trump, trumpet, you know, fairness and fairness, God is not fair. He is just. He is a God of justice. That's why he died, his son died on the cross and said, as many as receive him, so the opportunity has been given. It's not a free ride to heaven. Otherwise, there's no need for us to live any holy life. Otherwise, he just died on the cross, that brutal, shameful death, and we can live any way, anyhow, and go to heaven. Then what's the point? Why did he even come to die then? Are we here tonight? So when we talk about walking with God, you have to realize that everything on this earth comes at a price. And if we carry the presence of God, things shift. Amen. The power of God is experienced in the place where God's presence is. There are certain environments you enter, you also see there is a satanic presence in the place. There is a strong demonic presence in the place. In the same way, there is also the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He says, if your presence does not go with me, don't lead us up there. For how then can they know that we are your people? Is it not by your going with us so that we are distinguished? Your people and I from all the other people on the face of the earth. The Lord then said to Moses, I will do this thing that you have asked for. You have found favor in my sight. I'm reading verse 17. And I've known you personally by name. Then Moses said, please show me your glory. Are we at a glory night? Right. So Moses knew something about the glory of God. And the glory of God is the presence of God. Amen. The glory of God is the weight of his presence. The Hebrew word for glory is the word kavod. Kavod. The presence. The glory. The weight of his presence. The root word kavod talks about the weight of a presence. It's heavy. So when the Ark of Covenant was built and it was dedicated, the Bible says the Shekinah glory of the Lord, the weight of the presence of the Lord came into the place. And so when we gather and we pray, we expect to see his glory. Moses prayed and said, show me your glory. Tonight, that will be your prayer. Show me your glory. We need the glory of the Lord in the name of Jesus. The glory of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. The nature of the Lord. Now, we all know the scripture that says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. See, when the Bible says, as soon as Adam and Eve ate of the tree they were told not to eat, they realized they were naked. Now, what were they wearing before then? They were wearing the glory of the Lord. They fell from the glory. 
That's what the Bible says. Then the Lord now have to sow fig leaves and put it around them. But that was a poor covering. Because whilst a tree, part of a tree had to die to cover their nakedness, they don't realize that actually it was still dying. When you cut a tree, you take a leaf, gradually after a while, it will dry. Because it's dying. And that's why the Lord himself had to kill an animal and use it to cover it. Sending them a prophetic message that what will cover your sin one day will be the death of an innocent animal. Somebody innocent must die. An innocent blood must be shed to cover it. Because when they sinned and felt the nakedness, it was they who actually cut a leaf and covered themselves. But that was a poor cover. They fell from the glory of God. That's what they were wearing before. And that's why after we are saved, we are returned to our position of glory in God. So that when we move, God has moved. When you carry the presence of God, you are the residential address of God. The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in you. And God's glory, look at him here, look at him. He showed us the four levels of his glory. I will do this thing you have asked me for. Moses said, please show me your glory. And look at God. God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, number one. Whenever the glory of God, which is also the presence of God, is in a place, the goodness of God is experienced in the place. You can't carry God's presence and be wicked. It's not possible. Because the presence of God is the glory of the Lord. And it says, my glory will go with you. And he says, I will make my goodness pass before you. Number two, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. The second manifestation of the glory of God is the name of the Lord. Somebody shout the name of the Lord. The Bible says, at the call of his name, every knee shall bow. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. So the goodness of the Lord, the name of the Lord, and it says, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. The graciousness of God. In other words, the grace of God. The unmerited favor of the Lord. This is all woven inside his presence. When we carry his presence, we are carrying the goodness of the Lord. Remember David prayed in Psalm 23 and says, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Goodness shall follow me. When goodness begins to follow you, it is impossible for anyone to do any wicked thing to you. Because the presence of the Lord would deflect every wickedness. The Bible says, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will be merciful or I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. Four levels. My goodness and my mercies. So when David was praying Psalm 23, he knew by revelation what he was asking for. That when the Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. Then he says that surely goodness and mercies shall follow me. Some people, what has been following them is bad luck. But may goodness and mercy follow you. As you carry the presence of the Lord, may goodness follow you. May mercies escort you in the name of Jesus. And he says, I'll proclaim the name of the Lord. I'll be gracious. Grace, mercy, goodness, and the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Then he said, but you cannot see my face. For no man shall see me and leave. Then the Lord said, behold, there is a place beside me. And you shall stand there on the rock. And while my glory is passing by, is that in your scriptures? While my glory is passing by, while this fourfold presence because this is my presence will go with God promise him my presence will go with you then when he says show me your glory he says my glory is going to pass but this is how it manifests in goodness in my graciousness in my mercy and in my name and he says whilst my glory passes by hallelujah his glory is the same as his presence may we experience glory so there is a deep revelation why I named our Friday night prayer meetings as glory night. That we can experience the presence of the Lord. Very soon we're going to have glory hour. That will start from 11 p.m. to 12 midnight every day. One hour of solid prayer. I will lead it from a location. Somebody shout glory hour. Glory hour. 
Because we must experience the glory of the Lord. The whole world needs the glory of the Lord. In Jesus name. That was why the Bible says when the ark was captured in 1 Samuel. Because Israel had been sinning. In the days of Eli the priest. And the Philistines captured the ark. When the news came to Eli. That this is what has happened. The Bible says one of Eli's children. The wife was pregnant. And when she heard the news. She went into labor. And when she gave birth to a child. In the midst of the news that the ark of God has been captured by the enemy. She named the child Ikavod. Ikavod. That means the glory has departed. May you not have an Ikavod situation. May you have a Kavod situation in the name of Jesus. But listen, the glory didn't just happen. Moses interceded for it. The glory of the Lord is not automatic. You have to intercede for it. Those who continuously wait on the Lord will experience the glory of the Lord in different dimensions. May our church grow by reason of the glory. In Jesus' name. And the Bible says, while my glory is passing by, verse 22, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and protectively cover you with my hand until I have passed. Take note of it. That means his glory is the same as his presence. Isn't it? Because Moses said, your presence should go with me. He said, okay, I'll go with you. Then he says, Moses, then show me your glory. So it is being used interchangeably. His presence is the same as his glory. And then he says, as I pass by, who is passing by? Is it not the Lord? Is it not his presence passing by? And he says, my glory will be passing by. And he says, I will cover you until I have passed by. So he is the same as the glory. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be seen. Now, this went on. And then the Bible says in the next chapter, in chapter 34, Moses was still in the presence of the Lord. He had brought the tablets of stone and God had written on it the Ten Commandments. And whilst Moses was still in the presence of the Lord, by the time he came down, something strange happened. A rub on of the glory of the Lord. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Glory. And the Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses, chapter 34 verse 1. So it's a continuation. The Lord said to Moses, so you see, this is still continuing. The, the conversation is still going on there. The Lord has passed by his presence. His glory has filled the whole place. Moses has seen the glory of the Lord. The encounter was still going on. God was still giving him some assignments there. And cut two tablets of stone like the first I'll write on this. And the Lord told him to do all of these things. And the Bible says that he did all these things. And while that was going on, the Bible says in the verse number 29... Then the Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses. So he's still in his presence. The glory has passed. The glory of the Lord has manifested. And Moses was still talking to God. And the Ten Commandments has been written. Then the Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses, write these words. For in accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. Is that in your Bible? Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. If you want to see the glory of the Lord, you must have waiting capacity. The capacity to wait on the Lord in prayer. When we pray every day in the presence of the Lord, there is a rub on of the presence of God or the glory of God upon us. Sometimes you move into some realm people don't understand. Because when it comes to the glory of God, that has been generated by prayer you walk at a certain level of grace that has got nothing to do with age are you here and that's why you come to the place to understand that we can be classmates and age mates but we are no grace mates and the bible says that the lord god almighty said to him write these words and Moses was there with him 40 days and 40 nights. He wasn't eating his usual food. There's no oven and microwave or anything up there on the mountain. For 40 days and 40 nights in the presence of the Lord. Tonight may you have a waiting capacity. Many of us pray and we quickly run out of the prayer closet. May the Lord draw you to the prayer closet. 
that you can fast and pray until his glory is evident. May our services be characterized by the glory of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. It makes all the difference. The Bible said Moses was there for 40 days. And he ate no bread and drank no water. There's a certain level of encounter with God. Because medically speaking, someone not drinking and eating for 40 days and 40 nights should not be well. But there's a supernatural touch that God touched it. So he was able to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And during this time, encounters were taking place. Rabon of the glory of God was falling. Signs of God's presence begin to show. You know, many times you hear of signs, wonders, and miracles. They are not the same. They look the same, but they are not the same. Amen. A miracle is a suspension of natural laws to bring to pass the supernatural. That's a miracle. Natural laws are suspended and supernatural laws take effect. So someone comes into a service and didn't have teeth and prayer goes on and new teeth come. That is a miracle. It's not healing. Are you here? If someone has headache and we pray and the headache disappears, that's healing. And that healing itself is a form of a miracle. Because something unusual has displaced natural laws and the supernatural has come to effect. A sign is a visible manifestation of something that is invisible. A sign is a visible manifestation. Now, we all got in here because we saw a sign board, isn't it? And that signboard is far away from this building. It's somewhere by the roadside and it points, there's an arrow that points Kennedy building. It's only when you follow it closely and you get here, then you see the building also called that. So it's always an outward manifestation of something that is hidden. It points to the fact that if you come into this territory, you are seeing a signboard that is telling you you are close to where Kennedy building is. You are close to where Tesco is. So we see sign boards. They are signs. In medicine, doctors are trained to observe signs. Signs of diseases. The patient reports symptoms. Doctors are able to put the symptoms together and it tells them this is a sign of a heart failure. Are you here? So we study signs and symptoms the patient will always report the symptom but the doctor puts the symptoms together and tells you this is a sign that the heart is failing or the liver is failing etc so signs and therefore because you can't see somebody's heart isn't it it is the manifestations of outward behavior If someone has a liver disease or any organ is sick, you will start showing a certain sign. Either someone will start growing very lean. If it's a cancer, the person will start growing lean. There may be some swelling in some place. Because not every growth is a healthy growth. Some could be cancerous. Isn't it? So all that, but you realize that anybody with cancer gradually becomes lean. And then the blood level keeps on going down. So these are all symptoms. Doctors put all together and then it tells us something sinister is going on inside the body. Whenever we see signs, it's a sign that God is in a place or the devil is in a place. So Jesus said, these signs shall follow those who believe. These signs. And the Bible tells us that Moses came down from the mountain, having spent 40 days and 40 nights in the presence of the Lord. Look at verse 29. And when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, he did not know that the skin of his face was shining. Hallelujah. He didn't see it, others saw it. 
Sometimes we carry the presence of the Lord. We don't see it. Others begin to see. It means that whenever the presence of the Lord is manifested in anyone's life, ministry, or in the church, when we get there, we will see something. You will see a sign. In the case of Moses, an unusual development. His face was shining. So the people couldn't look into his face. His face was radiating like the sun. I said, this is strange. If you carry the presence of the Lord or you wait in the presence of the Lord, there will be some strange signs. Hallelujah. Nobody's natural face looks like the sun. That people can say, I can't look on you. Look at the Bible. The Bible says, for with the... He did not know that his, the skin of his face was shining with a unique radiance because he had been speaking with God. Have you been speaking with God? If you have truly been speaking with God, we will see something. Yinka, we must see something. Hallelujah. Now, if you have been speaking to God and all of us have been speaking to God, when we all gather, we can't have a meeting without a strange sign. Are you here? We, we can't have a meeting without manifestations of the presence of God. Because if you have waited on God and waited, every one of us, have, when we come together, it's like a supreme court. There will be manifestations of power, the glory. Moses' face shone because he has been speaking to God. If the whole church has been speaking to God, when we gather, we see something. We see strange moves. You know, that's why when we go to camp meeting, we haven't gone anywhere. We are, we are there for four days, five days. You see strange movements, isn't it? Strange things happen at the camp. Because God is in the camp. We've all been fasting and praying. And then you see movements of God's presence. Strange acts of God. And it's not the devil. It is God. Are you here? Glory be to Jesus. Moses' face was shining. He didn't know that. And when Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone. And they were afraid to approach him. But Moses called to them. And Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. So they all ran away. The man was coming and said, there's something. Now he comes, he's calling for executive meeting. Nobody wants to come. He said, what, what have I done? He said, you don't see. <laughs> May we carry the presence of the Lord. Sometimes the presence of the Lord is in the meeting. That's why some people cannot stand. They will fall down. And it's not magic. It's God. Amen. Because you have been used to a backsliding church for a long time, you don't know that God's presence comes really into a meeting. We have been used to backsliding churches. Some of them are even trying to get revival now. All these mainline, dull, dull churches with big cathedrals all around, dry. But in years past, there was real fire there. For example, when you go into the Presbyterian church, you will find that before the service, whenever the service starts, they have a certain bar. They put it right in front of the door. No one comes in until the worship is finished. Because those who founded those churches, Zima Man, all those guys, they were men and women of prayer. And they know that when worship starts, nobody can just walk in anyhow. The presence of God is in a place. Psalm 22 verse 3 says that God inhabits the praise of his people. So when God has taken habitation, how can we just walk in leisurely? We don't respect the presence of God. So they put the bar there. Everybody wait outside. So if you don't get to church early, those inside will carry the presence of God. When they finish everything, pastor is about to preach, then they remove it, then you can come But over the years, there was backsliding. People became more knowledgeable than God. We began to lower the standards. Kings and emperors started coming to church. Oh, you mean you want to put the king underwater? Can you just not sprinkle it on him for his baptism? So little, little compromises here and there, we shut the power of God out of the service. And then we become very much more liberal theologians. Trying to justify what God has declared unjustified. And then we lose the presence of the Lord. But we have to know that the normal thing 
is that God's presence comes into a place. A priest, the leader of the people of God, goes on waiting for 40 days and 40 nights. He comes to church for the first time and nobody can look at his face. Glory, radiance. And everybody was standing away. And he called them towards him. The Bible says that everybody saw it. Verse 32. Afterward, all the Israelites approached him. And he commanded them to do everything that the Lord has said. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. They have to put a veil on him. They still, they, the thing is still raw. It's still, he's <laughs> come to church and you can't stand and look at his face. His face is shining. What a manifestation. And the Bible says, but whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off the veil until he came out. And when he came out and he told the Israelites what had been commanded by God, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, how his skin shone every time. So Moses put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with the Lord. They just can't look at him. The glory of God has rubbed on him. May we learn to wait on God that we will carry his presence in the name of Jesus. He separated him for 40 days and 40 nights. And this same God is still in our days. If we want to see his glory and because the purpose of all of this is that the people will believe in him. See, this God has been limited to some kind of theoretical God and some kind of, you know, we just read some scripture and everybody say amen and amen and some story and then we go. So when we are seeing power, we think it's the devil. When we are seeing presence, we think it's the devil. But somebody came to church and pastor's face is shining. Can you imagine that if I walk in this evening, my face is shining like the sun. I'm sure some people will leave us here and say, ha, ah, come and see. This is unusual. Haven't we seen the Archbishop of Canterbury who is well educated and we haven't seen anything like that? Or this Roman Catholic priest, they don't have anything like that? I think this church is a cult. Because the pastor's face cannot shine like that. It cannot. If you were in the days of Moses, that's what you'd have said. And this is how we kill the presence of God. Because we just think that for some reason, God is not so powerful, the devil is powerful. Anything miraculous, mighty, powerful is the devil. May we repent tonight. In the name of Jesus. If you limit God, you cannot see him. And that's why you need to read your Bible. Glory be to Jesus. Because whenever we wait on God, when his presence, we will see signs. This is one of the signs that Moses had been with God. Because it's not normal. Why, what, what, what kind of encounter is this? That his face was shining like the sun. People couldn't look. They can't look at it. Say, so, no, this guy has gone somewhere. Wednesday, I was telling them that when I started a church in Ghana years ago, there was so much movement. We were then called the Holy Ghost Center. And it's still the same. One day when we finish building all our buildings, there will be one particular building called the Holy Ghost Center. It is 24 hours prayer will go on. Mighty tabernacle of prayer, that will be their headquarters. <laughs> to be the prayer secretariat. I believe that a day will come if you approach near that building, you will feel power. <laughs> Satan will regret. He will move and go and stay somewhere, but out of this nation. And I remember that because every service we held, there was Holy Ghost baptism. Every service. If you come into the, you will speak in tongues. The anointing will hit you. The power of God is demonstrated. Righteousness, Holy Ghost baptism, evangelism. That's all that we are carrying. And as those things were going on, there was rumor in that part of Accra that this young man, he has gone to India to take some powers. <laughs> Me at that time, I've not even seen the ink inside of an aircraft before. They said, I've gone to India for powers. So, I mean, God cannot do any of these things except Satan. 
May we be delivered from crediting Satan with what God is doing. Amen. So, whenever we see signs after we are at praying church, you will see manifestations of God's presence. If a church fasts and prays, God will move there. Amen. Amen. So, the Bible tells us that this was what happened when the presence of God came upon Moses. When he experienced, he was carrying his presence. Church, we can move to the next level by carrying the presence of God. You see, when this thing happened, if you read later on, the Bible says, the whole of Israel, they feared Moses. And they feared the word of the Lord. They carried out the commandment of God. One of the reasons why there are manifestations of the presence in the form of these signs and movements is so that, so that people will believe in God. Amen. That people will fear God and honor him. Tonight as we pray, I pray that you will encounter God in the name of Jesus. And whenever we come around and we see movements of God's presence and power, believe God. Amen. Believe God. We haven't gone to India. <laughs> Amen. And we see throughout the scriptures these sort of manifestations, the presence. Let me give you one or two examples, then we will, we will get out of here. But in John chapter 18, verse 3 to 6, the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. Somebody shout glory. Because if we pray for his glory, he will do strange things. In John chapter 18, verse 3 to 6, the Bible says that Jesus and his disciples had come to Gethsemane. How many of you know about Gethsemane? Yeah. That's where he interceded for three hours. Three hours. Three hours prayer. And the Bible says, so Judas obtaining and taking charge of the band of soldiers and some guards of the high priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Because this was in the night. Then Jesus, knowing all that was about to befall him, went out to the people who had come to arrest him. And he said, who are you looking for? Whom are you seeking? Whom do you want? And they answered, we are looking for Jesus the Nazarene. Then Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who was betraying him, was also standing with them. And when Jesus said to them, I am he, the Bible says they went backwards and fell down to the ground. Are you here? Are you understanding the manifestations here? The man had been in three hours of prayer. They said some people are looking for him. They said, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus. They said, I am he. They went back and fell down. So he passed sounds and he speaks. People fall down. He said, ah, this is, this is the devil. If you were in this church, what would you say? Are you here? Jesus spoke people. They went back and fell down. He didn't even touch them. They went back and fell down. Because he was carrying the presence. Remember, kavod is the weight of his presence. So sometimes his presence can be heavy that you can't stand. In 2 Chronicles, the Bible says that the glory of the Lord filled the temple that Solomon was dedicating. And the priest could not minister. Because the glory, the Shekinah glory was the, everybody fell down. The priest even could not preach. Are we ready for his presence? Moses waited for 40 days and 40 nights. His face was shining. What a sign that God is with him. Jesus, three hours of prayer. And some people were looking for him. And they fell down. Now, you see, those people, they were not members of his church. So all these people, they just programmed them to start falling down. These are people who don't believe in him. They were coming to arrest him. He spoke and they fell down. Can you imagine? A lot of people have come. They just all boom, like that. Power. <laughs> May the Lord arrest some people. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Some of us, we have seen God. We have seen him. 
We have had encounters with God. We have seen signs of his presence. On university campus, there were people who don't come to church. They come and laugh at us when we are speaking in tongues. One day, one day, there's always a one day. One day, they are chief leader who comes to make mockery of us. The Holy Ghost arrested him. You can imagine that you come here every Friday and we are praying, shaka taba, don't tell baba. When we finish the day two, they live there, shaka baka, 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 pa. And they call us names and they made fun of us. And sometimes they will run around the campus and just repeating what they just heard, the last tongues that they heard, and they say it. These very fine days, looks like the Holy Ghost was waiting for them. This guy shouted the thing, and he couldn't stop. And as he couldn't stop, he couldn't run away. He was running now into the building, and ran to where we were all worshipping. And he fell on the ground, and he carried on. We want to now preach. The guy is still speaking in tongues. They pack him to one side. We, we preached. We finished everything. He's still speaking in tongues. Now he removed his dress and he was still speaking. Then they carried him like that to his room. Right through the campus. Everybody was seeing him. Bare chested. Today he's preaching in one part of the United Kingdom. He's a pastor. From that arrest. <laughs> You can't come and mock God when we have fasted for days. His presence was in the place. May we believe God. We are living in very dangerous times. And Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. When we carry his presence, it will settle every argument. It will settle every argument. May we know that God is here. So the Bible said, Jesus spoke and they went back and fell down. Look at Acts chapter 8, verse 6 to 8. Acts 8, 6 to 8. The Bible says that Philip went down to Samaria. Ordinary Philip. Brother Philip. He went down to Samaria to preach the gospel. Because they were being persecuted. But this is somebody who is carrying the presence of the Lord. And the Bible says they pay attention to what Philip said as they listened and saw the signs. Amen. They saw the signs that he performed. The miracles that were taking place. May we believe God for striking miracles. Striking movements of God. So that when atheists walk in there, they will realize you can't argue intelligently against this. Because faith is superior intelligence. Faith is superior intelligence. It's supernatural intelligence. Faith. When I see an atheist, I don't believe in God. I say you need God to believe what you are believing. Otherwise, you don't have any, you don't have any argument. If there's no God, you have nothing to say anymore. Isn't it? Yeah, there's no God. You have nothing. So, even you need the existence of God to start talking, to make an argument. Like, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. The fact that you don't see your brain does not mean it doesn't exist. Amen. You don't believe it doesn't. You don't believe that God exists and that He created you. But for some reason, you believe. That you are a product of a tadpole. You are wonderful. <laughs> and that's why the scripture says, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. It takes a certain degree of foolishness to believe there's no God. It's a very wonderful level of foolishness. The Bible says, the crowds... We pay attention to what Philip said. They listened and saw the signs he was performing. Verse 7. For unclean spirits. These signs. He says. Because the word for. Is the word because. Unclean spirits. Crying out with a loud voice. Came out of many who were possessed. And many who were paralyzed. And lame were healed. So there was great joy in the city. Many demons. 
cried out with a loud voice. So it is possible that when the presence of God is in a place, some people will shout, yay, 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 yay. Yes. And we are not demons in this house. Some people are being delivered. It's all right. It's there in the scriptures. The Bible says, and unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many. So some people, when they are being delivered, they will shout like that. Are you here? Glory be to Jesus. If we pray all the time, when we come to church, we will see this all the time. And when we see it all the time, it is not the devil. Are you here? It's not the devil. The devil, the devil is a small thing. That's why when he rebelled against God, God looked and said, hold on, hold on. I'm a heavyweight. You are just like a flyweight. Michael, deal with him. <laughs> Michael, deal with him. This, deal with this younger little Mosato boy. Deal with him for me. And when he was cast to the earth, Jesus came and said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I give the same power to you. In my name, you shall cast out demons. Resist the devil and he will flee. It's not, a, it's, it's, ah. it's not God's level. Please don't give him credit the way you are giving him credit. <laughs> Angela, you can bind him and cast him out. What has he created that we are giving him credit for? What has he created? He is a thief and the manufacturer of lies. Jesus dealt with him. Evil spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many. When we gather because of the presence of God, demons will be cast out manifestations of God's power. People will be delivered in many ways in the service. And when those things are happening, it's a sign that God is in a place. Sometimes we don't know what we are dealing with until the presence of God brings some things out. Because when the presence of God is in a place, at a certain level, demons cannot thrive in that environment. And some of you, things happen to you in the service, not because anyone has cast a spell on you, but because you don't even know where you are coming from. You don't understand the covenants that your fathers and your grandfathers and things have made. You don't even know what happened when you were born and what names you were given and what rituals were performed. You don't even understand certain things. So when at a certain level of encounter with God, God's power begins to confront the powers of darkness that are located somewhere in your life. And that's why I see things like this begin to happen. When we went to come, there were so many manifestations. And some of them look very similar. Some people came and asked me, Bishop, why? It looks like, you know, if somebody looks back, you think, are they all faking it? Because some of the manifestations look the same. And I said, none of them is faking it. The manifestations, because they all have similar backgrounds. Some of them were in similar things before they became born again. Some of them were in similar relationships, setting things, setting setting things and it's the same demons that's why the demons were reacting that way amen i see your deliverance in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 6 and verse 13 on the day of pentecost when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all together in one place they have been praying for 10 days 10 days are you following what I'm teaching you? Because you see that each of these manifestations is a product of waiting on the Lord. The glory is his presence. And these people had been waiting. Jesus had risen from the dead. And he's gone to heaven. 40 days. When he rose from the dead, he walked around for 40 days. 10 days after the 40th day, which is 50, Pente, Pentagon, five-sided figure, 50. Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection, 10 days after he'd gone to heaven, they had been waiting in Jerusalem according to his instruction. They should wait. For 10 days they have been in prayer and suddenly, you can't see suddenly until there have been some prayer. 
Until you have sown the seeds of prayer, you can't see suddenly. When suddenly you see something moving, you don't know what is behind the scenes. Hallelujah. You have no idea. When our church was growing in Ghana and they said, I've gone for, to India for power, they don't know that every Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., I'm in prayer. At the University of Ghana Botanical Gardens, I walk up and down. Kaba, Sopre, Kataba. Some of my friends used to call that lane Hansen Lane because the green grass have become brown. I walk on it. Shakabe, take a bone, Dadama, Sopre, Kataba. And because I don't want to be distracted, I put a handkerchief and tie it around my face, my eyes. So I don't see anything. I pray before I realize it's five o'clock. You started at eight, it's five p.m. You are betting the thing. You are giving birth to a revival that the Lord told me once I was in this form will touch the nations of the world. This church, it can die. It cannot die. You have no idea what has gone into its roots in intercession and prayer. Capacity to pray. We wait on God. Every day at three o'clock, I will pray. I will pray. Then there was a point where the Lord said, pray 10 hours a day. That was most of the time when it's long vacation. 10 hours every day. So when there's movement, they say you've gone to India. Me that I've not sat in a helicopter. I've, I've gone to India. You, you can't give God any credit. But that is the thing. You see, I told you, whenever people see suddenly, they don't know what gave birth to the suddenly. But I'm sharing with you the secret in the scriptures. These guys had hidden for 10 days, non-stop prayer. And suddenly, if you look at verse 2, it's a consequence of verse 1 and the chapter 1. Jesus told them, go and wait. And so they gathered in an upper room. For 10 days, they prayed non-stop. And suddenly, suddenly. That explains why I, I always share with you, when we come into service, we start praying. At the beginning, you don't see any movement. When we are getting to the end of the service, you start seeing movements. Because it takes some time for the anointing to build up. And so these are the secrets to carrying power. So people who don't know that we pray, they just think, ah, but we, we were also here before they came. How is it that they are growing like that? I'm sure they have gone for some powers. No, they don't know that we have been praying. There is a machine room. It's called the prayer room. That's where we generate the anointing. Hallelujah. The anointing is generated by consistent prayer. It is maintained by holy living. That's how you carry the presence. We've been praying. So before, people would just say, ah, where have they been? We've been around. We've just been on the ground in prayer. And suddenly when we lift ourselves, ah, what kind of church is this? How can they be growing this fast? Why? The devil grows churches. Acts chapter 2. And the Bible says, suddenly, there was like a violent rushing wind came from heaven. Filled the whole house where they were staying. They saw tongues like flames of fire. Strange things. Can you imagine when you come to church, we are praying. Suddenly, everybody seeing fire on anybody's head. Said, this place, I'm sure, there is a principality that they are working with. These people prayed. Now look at that. The Bible says, and he filled them. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the Bible says there were people that came, a crowd came. Whenever a church is doing the right thing, some crowd will gather. People came. This sound occurred. Multitude came. And they said, they were surprised, confused. Each one of them, verse 13, but some sneered and said they are drunk. Now, how does drunkards look like? Do maybe, have you seen a drunkard before? Yeah, how do they behave? I mean, if you came into this meeting right now, you describe all of us as drunkards, what should we have been doing that will make you come to that conclusion? Be dramatic, just be dramatic. Let the anointing of the dramatic behavior just manifest now. 
<laughs> the baby, oh, tell us something. Eh? What were they doing? Oh, if you want to act it out to you, you are welcome. Act it out. Yeah, act it out. Act it out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Some people pray for 10 days. Holy Spirit fills them and observers describe them as drunkards. If you came to church and people were praying, Cabo, Sente, Cabo, Santo. And some people fall down and they roll and say, these people. Let me get out of here. I think that they are all possessed. <laughs> you don't know God. Thou knowest not God. They were drunk. May the Lord deliver you in the name of Jesus. May you know how to touch God. Because God is not a man. Are you here? His ways are not our ways. To be honest, he is not a diplomat. He just broke on the scene like that. I mean, he's not a diplomat. His ways are strange. I mean, God, you were looking at the whole earth. You want someone to carry your child and bring the child to the world. How do you impregnate somebody's fiancé? You mess the wedding plans of Joseph and put him in a tight corner. He can't explain himself. He wants to stop with the lady too. You come and warn him, you don't put her away. The pregnancy is me. Take responsibility. Joseph's parents called him to a meeting and said, Look, son, behave yourself. Did you touch her? Say, Mom, no, I've never slept with her. Come on, stop the nonsense. This cannot happen. How can you speak the truth so we know how to cover you before the priest? Are you afraid that the law of Moses says you should be stoned to death? Say, Mom, I haven't touched her. Okay, if you haven't touched her, why are you still insisting you want to marry her? Are you all right? God comes in the night and says, I said, Go and take responsibility. God can mess you up. And he's still God. Are you here today? I pray that God will mess some of you up. To bring his name glory in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready for me tonight? Hey. Okay. Okay. And he entered again into the synagogue. And a man was there who had a withered hand. It means he's paralyzed. His hands, he can't stretch it. He's withered like that. Some people were, were born that way. Others have strange things. And this guy, he can't stretch his hand. He's like that. And they watch him closely whether he will heal him. You know, there are some people, they only watch churches. They don't worship this God, but they are watching churches to find fault with them. Commentators. My economics teacher in secondary school used to call them Beshwa Adifu. These are people who come to observe, observers. May the Lord deliver you from being a spectator to be a participant with God. In Jesus' name, there are levels in God. And every one of you must have an encounter with this God. It changes the game. When Paul met him on the way to Damascus, it affected his life forever. Even if you brought him before kings and magistrates, he will start his defense by saying, I was on my way to Damascus. A light shone. I fell down. I became blind for three days. You know, that encounter was enough. It becomes the turning point encounter with the presence of God. You beat Paul. They whipped him. They, they, they lashed him with so many things. They hit him with rods. He said, twice I was beaten with rods. 39 times at my back. And he gets up. And the next energy he gets, you must be born again. He's still preaching. Why? He had met God. I pray that you will meet God at a higher level. Moses met God. He changed the game. May you know this God. The Bible says that he therefore healed this guy. Verse 11. Let's look at verse 11. Verse 10, for there had been many healings that day and as a result, great numbers of sick people were crowding around him, trying to touch him. Verse 11, and whenever those possessed by demons caught sight of him, they would fall down before him. Is that in your Bible? Ah, Marcosi Mreko Adasa. 
Look at that. Unclean spirits, eh? when they saw him, they fell down. They came to church when they see pastor, they fall down. Say, ah, this guy has gone to India. He's gone to China. He's using this spirit. He's using that spirit. It's nonsense. Unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, he hasn't touched them. Hey, he hasn't touched them. They saw him, they fell down. Now sometimes you are ministry, you are coming in that way and everybody is falling down and say, ah, this guy, I think he's carrying something. Because if I touch you, you say he pushed them. I'm not pushing. There's something is pushing. And sometimes you see the whole thing, you realize that this cannot be fake. You know, guys are very protective of their dignity and their ego, isn't it? Yeah, like this guy, uh, Jermaine. You see, Jermaine is crying. They say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You think he faked it? Why would he cry before girls? You think he would cry before girls? <laughs> something was doing him. Are you here? The presence of the Lord was heavy in the place. You just can't fake it. Hey. Unclean spirits, when they saw him, they fell down and cried out saying, you are the son of God. And he sternly warned them they shouldn't say these things. Hey. Mm. Look at verse 22. But the Jewish teachers of the religion who had arrived from Jerusalem said, Ah, he's possessed by Beelzebub, by the ruler of the demons. He cast out demons. Have you seen it there? Yeah. The Jewish religion, they, they had a church before Jesus started his church. Now they became intimidated. And they have to find a way to accuse the new movement. They said, we know. He's using Beelzebub. I mean, how could you determine the spirit he's using and you can cast the demon out? So Jesus said, how can Satan cast out Satan? If I'm using Satan's power, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, then it's not going to stand. And if Satan has risen against himself, then that's not going to be a good thing. In another translation, or another counterpart scripture, he talks about the fact that nobody can go into a strong man's house, okay, that's there, and, and, and destroy his goods, except they bind him first. Then it says, if I, by the finger of God, cast out demons, then by whom do your children do that? The finger of God in prophecy refers to the Holy Spirit. The first time that reference was given to him was in the encounter with the magicians of Pharaoh. After the first three equalizations, you know, when Moses entered the palace, he threw the rod down. The Pharaoh magicians and diviners challenged it. They also threw their rod down, it became snakes. The second level of the battle, Moses' rod was used to hit the Nile. It became blood. The Bible says they too, they did this and the water became blood. And God was taking things to them. And then God changed the game. He said, hit the ground with the rod and all the ground became lice. And the Bible says that the magicians of Pharaoh did so with their enchantments, but they could not turn anything into lies. From there, it became a one-way traffic. And they themselves testified and said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. So the Bible says, Jesus is saying, I cast demons out by the Spirit of God. Now look at what is happening here. Verse 28. I solemnly declare that any sin of man can be forgiven, even blasphemy against me, the Son of Man. But blasphemy against the Holy Spirit can never be forgiven. It is an eternal sin. Maybe some of you have not read this in the Scriptures. But there is a particular sin that can never be forgiven. Will not be, it's not that God can. He said he will not forgive. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Now what is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? That is to, to ascribe. Hmm, to ascribe a miracle of God to the devil. To credit the devil 
for something that God has done, the Bible says it is an unpardonable sin. Every theologian, every scholar, everyone that is in this has studied that scripture and there's nothing, no way to it. It's explicit. It's there. Jesus was the one who spoke this. I'm the one who forgives his I'm telling you, you don't know. There's a particular, you can sin against me, the son of God, it will be forgiven. You sin against God, the father, it will be forgiven. But this sin against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. Look, it's there. All sins will be forgiven the sons of men. And whatever blasphemies they may utter, but he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation because they said he has an unclean spirit. Because they said he is casting demons out by the power of Satan. Because they said he is doing the church by the power of Satan. If you don't know, keep quiet then. Church and ministry is not politics. You can criticize a political party and politician, but make sure that you have the evidence in the spirit. That's why some of us who even know when something is wrong in some church, we look at it carefully and we leave it to the judgment of God. And we rather focus on teaching what the truth is in the word of God. Amen? If you believe there's something not right in a way, use the scriptures. Prove it from the scriptures to teach. We're able to teach from the scriptures that this is doctrinally an error. But when we are not sure of the movement of God, the power of God, the glory of God, the visitations of God, let's be careful. Are you here? Because this God we serve is a righteous God and he's also a God of judgment. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. Jesus was the one who spoke it. Because they said he has an unclean spirit. Because they said he's using the spirit of the devil to cast demons out. Hey, so God cannot cast demons out. But you see, let me tell you one thing. When you stand to serve God genuinely, expect attacks of the enemy. Amen. Jesus was called all kinds of names. They said he's even using the prince of demons to cast demons, but he still remained focused. Stay focused. In Jesus' name. Anything that is doing well will be criticized. It will be attacked. Paul was accused. Jesus was accused. Every man of God and woman of God will be accused. But you know what? Stay focused. In Jesus' name. Make sure that your experiences are rooted in scripture. And when you don't understand anything, ask for clarification. Use, let the scriptures be used to explain to you. That's how our church is built on the foundation of God's word. Amen. Are you, are you excited? Or you are thinking about it? Maybe some of you have accused the church. Tonight, receive repentance. In the name of Jesus. Like Paul said, you go to God and say, Lord, I did this in my ignorance. Forgive me. In Jesus' name. If you read the scriptures, there's more. You will see any, any presence of God, strange things happen. Ezekiel encountered God. And the Bible says for days he could not talk. His tongue, his tongue stuck to the roof of his mouth for days. I mean, if you experience that, you say, ah, this guy, if he's a true prophet of God, why is he now dumb? John the Baptist father, he met an angel of God. He shut his mouth for nine months. So people will experience strange things, but it doesn't mean it's the devil. I mean, for the devil, we don't fear him. If he's the devil, we'll cast it out. But sometimes people are being delivered and they are having strange experiences with God. I pray that you encounter God. And when you encounter God, may there be a biblical base. By which, I'm not saying that the devil doesn't fake things. There's a devil, he does stuff. Are you here? But let's not credit him with what God is doing. That's where the danger is. If a church is not growing, that one is God. If a church is increasing in thousands, I suspect they are using some spirit. How can you say that? Jesus started with two people. By the time he was leaving, there were 120. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were added to the church. That was the fastest growing church. If that happened, would we say, mm, this Proton's church on this campus, how can 3,000 people be added like that? Mm -mm. 
I'm sure Jesse has swallowed a frog. And that is why he's standing in front of the door and people are coming in. And as the people are coming, they are only hearing the, do- the frog in his mouth. Row, 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 row. And destroying people into the church. So the Holy Spirit cannot draw people into the church. This Kufu, the way she's leading this choir and they are growing, I suspect her. I think her name might even mean the name of some demon. People will just, people will just be coming up with things they can't prove with scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, stay focused. In Jesus' name, desire that God will use you. He will come among us. If he doesn't come among us, then we are a dry church. When we are empty, then there's no, there's no difference between us and unbelievers. There must be a sign of his presence. The Bible says that when the apostles worked that miracle, God worked through them and a man who was born a cripple walked in Acts chapter 3. The Bible says in chapter 4, when they brought apostles to a council meeting to accuse them, the Bible said something significant. The Bible says that when they look at the man standing there, who they all know was a cripple and he could now stand. The Bible says they could not speak anymore against it. They have no they have no defense. May the Lord give us authentic miracles of his presence in the name of Jesus. May the newest soul in church encounter God. May the presence of God be without discrimination in the church. May the glory of God be experienced by the people of God as they pray. In the next 30 minutes, I want you to lift your voice and say, Lord God, visit me. Maybe as we are praying, you may be talking to God and say to God, Lord, forgive me. Maybe I may have credited something to the devil when you are the one doing it. Lord, forgive me. Maybe I didn't understand something and I I got it all wrong and I, I pray for forgiveness. God is a merciful God. Tonight he will forgive.